Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage. All right, so getting back to work on the Cobra. Now what I have to do is, I was looking at the wiring behind the dashboard. And I did not like the way I had the controller mounted or the computer mounted for the fuel injection system, my O2 controller, all the electronics, and the way the wiring, wiring was. It just wasn't neat, and I need to shorten up some of the wires. So before I take it all apart, I want to take advantage of this time right now to get the wiring exactly the way I want it. So when I put it back together, it will be very easy to put back together, which means I have to remount the, con the uh, controller for the O2 sensor, the wideband O2 controller, the starter relay, the computer for the fuel injection system, my MSD box, and the fuse panel so that it's easy to get to if I do need to service it, like change a fuse or troubleshoot some wiring. So I'm gonna take that all apart, uh, set it up, and, re and I have to reinforce the, the hoop or the mount for the steering wheel support and the dashboard support. I need to put some more support in there because I cut that away when I put in the windshield wiper system. So I need to reinforce that, mount all the electronic boxes to get it nice and neat, then I can neaten up the wiring. The first step in cleaning up my wiring will be to mount the three electrical boxes. I have my computer for the engine management system, my wideband O2 sensor box, and then the spark box for the ignition. I'm going to take advantage of a little notch up in there in the foot box or on the passenger side, and I'll mount my O2 sensor uh, controller right there because my wire comes right through the bottom there, and I can have a nice straight shot right to the controller, and it'll be out of the way. And since that's where the battery box is. The fasteners on the back will not be seen. The battery will hide those nice. Now we'll just mount this up in this little recess here. Mount it right around here somewhere by using four rivet nuts, quarter 20 rivet nuts. Yes, I did put that hole in wrong. You can see it when the battery is installed. So I had to move it over that way all of the holes are hidden behind the battery. Now the O2 sensor is mounted and those screws go inside just behind the battery and the battery will fit. I don't have to worry about it hitting those. All I have to do is mount the last two boxes which are the spark box for the ignition and the computer. And I'm going to mount them underneath there. And it's not as complex as it looks. Um, I'm looking through the wiring diagram and uh, even though there's a lot of wires here, it's going to be fairly simple or not too difficult, just very time consuming to shorten these wires up. Uh, the wiring, although it looks messy, is two different wiring systems if you think about it, maybe three. The first wiring system goes to the fuel injection system and sensors. Uh, the, these wires go to the top of the engine for the other sensors, MAP sensor, manifold air pressure, that uh, manifold pressure sensor, that kind of thing. And all of these wires goes to the fuse box and this is all the body lighting, you know, the, the brake lights, headlights, turn signals, all that stuff. So these will be two separate things, but first I need to get these two boxes mounted.
Now with the spark box mounted, I had my starter solenoid mounted down here, but it was a little too low. The positive wire from the battery cable was a little too close, and I didn't want to have that short out, so I just welded on a, a piece of three-quarter inch tubing, welded it to that, and now my starter relay is up here. Now the battery cable can come in nice and neat. The cable from the and the starter itself will come up here nice and neat and be out of the way. Now all I have to do is mount or put another plate in here just like this. I did for the spark box. I'll put another plate in here so I can mount. This will work like this. I'll have room here for. I can mount this. It'll still be underneath the dashboard like that. I'll have room for a couple of these straps. One for the positive, one for the negative. I have one of each. Tie straps for all the power. And then there'll be plenty of room over here to mount my fuse box. Plenty of room there. So first, I'll make the, sh the steel, cut the steel so it goes across and I can mount this first. And I'll screw it to it. I, I'm screwing it to this cross member so that if I have to service it, it's easy to take each component out separately without having to unscrew it from the base. So that, that should work out good. So I'll put some rivet nuts in, cut the metal, put some rivet nuts in, and we'll get it all screwed in. So it looks like I have everything mounted the way I'd like it. My wideband O2 controller is over there in the corner and the spark box mounted to a plate which is easily detachable. I got plenty of room for my wires. My starter relay is up here which makes it easy to get to. I'll have a, a, a nice post here to strap wires to to hold them down. The computer for the ignition system or for the fuel injection is mounted here and that's screwed to the cross member, this steel cross member with these riv nuts all the way across and uh, that'll make that easy to take apart or pull down so I can get to the hole in the back and the, the fuse box I have mounted to these three quarter inch tube I just welded to this plate and I welded to this plate so it gives me room that way the wires can come out of the bottom very easily uh, out the top where the wire needs to come out to the top to go to the uh, over to the start switch and all the gauges and then I have a hole that goes through the back I drill a hole to the back a big hole so the wire can come here and go straight out to the uh, Distributor, I'm sorry. It goes out to the alternator alternator wire wire comes back to here So all that wiring is complete now all I have to do is start working on the wiring Now with all the electronic boxes mounted the way I'm going to want them when I take the car apart, now I had to take the body off the frame because I have to paint the frame, which means I'm going to have to take all the wiring out, take the engine out, take it all apart so I can paint the body. Not only that, I have to flip it over and do some fiberglassing on the bottom of the body before I can paint it, uh, fill in some holes and strengthen where I bonded the body to the bottom floor. That has to be all done with the body off of the frame, paint the frame, put it all back together. So in, ease, in, in order to make it easier to reassemble after I have it, all completed I want to have it painted the last thing I want to do when I'm putting it back together is be welding on the body or be welding on the 
a steering column support or doing anything. All I want to do is reassemble. So with all that stuff in place, now all I have to do is fix the wiring, neaten it up so it's ready to roll. When I put it back together, all I have to do is uh, strap and tie down the wiring harnesses so they don't move around. Then I can reassemble it and do the interior work. It'll be nice and neat. So stick around. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.